Good morning. I'm Councilmember Mark Traeger, Chair of the Education Committee, and wishing everyone a very happy New Year. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we vote on the Student Transportation Oversight Package, or now, now it's an acronym called STOP, including uh, proposed introduction uh, number 89C, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Andy King, proposed introduction number 45B, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Daniel Drum, proposed introduction number 926B, sponsored by the Speaker, Councilmember Corey Johnson, proposed introduction number 929B, sponsored by Councilmember uh, Joseph Borelli, proposed introduction number 1099A, proposed, uh, and proposed introduction 1148B, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, proposed introduction number 1173B, which I am proud to sponsor, and resolution number 540, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala. I'd like to recognize the members of the committee who are here, Councilmember Barron, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Deutsch, Councilmember Brennan, Councilmember Salamanca, Councilmember Rose, Councilmember Drum, and Councilmember Cohen. Uh, the department, and Councilmember Gredenchik, that's right, and Councilmember Rodriguez, who just walked in. Uh, the Department of Education's Office of Pupil Transportation is responsible for the busing services of nearly 150,000 New York City students, and the great majority of those students are young children, students with disabilities, and those who are medically fragile. For too long, we have heard reports of problems and, and mismanagement at OPT. Earlier this school year, OPT's failure to provide students with safe, secure, and reliable school busing services by excessive delays and no-shows in September, and by a storm in November that led to children stranded on buses for hours on end and without department protocols in place to ensure those students had access to essentials like bathrooms or water. On top of that, DOE's lack of communication with parents and failure to hold school bus vendors accountable has been unconscionable. I commend those at the DOE who have recognized that it is high time for change in our city school bus services. And I'd like to thank my colleagues for working with me to ensure uh, students on school buses will not go uh, without oversight any longer. We are introducing our school bus industry to the 21st century. It is fascinating to me that GPS devices have been around for quite some time, but they've never actually been required to be turned on and operationalized on school buses all this time. That ends today and, and with the mayor's signature as well. Uh, today we are voting on the following legislation which com uh, uh, comp uh, comprises the Student Transportation uh, Oversight Package. Uh, proposed introduction 89C, sponsored by Councilmember King, which would require DOE to report twice a year on the number of school bus routes scheduled to take uh, less than an hour, between one and two hours, and over two hours, and the average length of time scheduled for school bus routes in each community school district. This bill would also require DOE to share the actual start and end time of each school bus route each day with the council twice a year. Proposed introduction 451B, sponsored by Councilmember Drum, which would require the DOE to distribute a school bus ridership guide uh, in hard copy and electronically no later than 15 days before the start of each school year to all students and parents. Such ridership guide shall include a description of eligibility for school bus services and what the services entail, as well as information for parents and students living in temporary housing and students in foster care. Proposed introduction 926B, sponsored by the speaker, would require DOE to share with parents and post on its website how parents can file a complaint about a school bus employee, the process by which the department investigates such a complaint, and the possible results of such an investigation. Proposed introduction 929B, sponsored by Councilmember Borelli, would require DOE to report twice a year on all the calls received from parents and guardians about school bus services, the complaints received from parents and guardians about school bus services, the investigations DOE opened into school bus employees, the number of those investigations that were substantiated, and a description of, of outcomes taken by DOE in the event of a substantiated investigation. Proposed introduction 1099A, sponsored by Councilmember Kalos, of which I am a proud uh, co-sponsor, would require each school bus used to transport students pursuant to a contract with the DOE to be equipped with a two-way radio or other communication device allowing communication with the operator of the school bus. This bill would also require each bus used to transport students pursuant to a contract with the DOE to be equipped with a GPS tracking device. Yes, welcome to the 21st century. 
and will require authorized parents and guardians to have access to the real-time location of their child's school bus whenever it is in use. Proposed introduction 1148B, sponsored by Council Member Kalos, would require the DOE to report twice a year on how school bus routes are determined and a list of school bus vendors who, are, who have completed a dry run of their route as required by their contract. The bill would also require the DOE to share with parents and guardians before the start of the school year their, their, their child's bus route, including the vendor assigned to such route, and to let parents know daily if their child's bus is late arriving or departing school. My bill, proposed in Direction 1173B, would require the DOE to report twice a year on the department's school bus services, including the vendors providing school bus transportation to others, uh, to students. It's important that my colleagues understand that we contract with certain bus companies, but those bus companies contract with a number of vendors. And there's been a lack of transparency historically about all the vendors that they subcontract with. That also ends today. The number of vehicles and employees used by such vendors, the number of bus routes and transportation sites in use, the number of students using school bus transportation, including the type of, of students, the number of students in foster care who applied for transportation service, the school bus transportation services provided to pre-kindergarten students, and the categories of students who are eligible for DOE transportation services. The bill would also require DOE to, uh, to report twice a year on school bus delays with the council and post on, on its on the department's website the number of school bus delays and no-shows disaggregated by vendor. Finally, Resolution 540, sponsored by Councilmember Ayala, calls on DOE to provide more extensive training for bus drivers who transport students with disabilities. Uh, these important pieces of legislation will bring much needed oversight to our city's school bus services. And I'd like to just say for the record, I think this is probably the most comprehensive package of legislation uh, overseeing the student transportation system I've ever. Uh, this will bring probably unprecedented transparency and accountability to an area of the DOE that historically has really lacked transparency and accountability. That will be ending sh soon. I'd like to thank the education committee staff who work really, really hard uh, on the package of legislation. Even during the holiday break up to New Year's, they were negotiating with the, ad with the admin. I really want to thank them all. I want to thank Beth Gold, Jen Atwell, Kalima Johnson, Elizabeth Hoffman, Caitlin O'Hagan. I want to thank my staff, uh, Anna Scaife, Vanessa Ogle, and Eric Feinberg. Um, and I'll now turn it over to some of my colleagues to speak about their legislation, uh, beginning with Councilmember Ben Kalos. Good morning. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos. I want to thank all the parents, advocates, and members of the media who are here and watching online. I want to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, and of course, our chair, Mark Traeger, for leading the student transportation oversight package, the STOP package. Uh, and I want to thank uh, members of the City Council staff, Andrea Vasquez, who, as mentioned, was negotiating this on New Year's Eve, as well as Ala Masawai, uh, who uh, was doing the data to prove why this is important. And um, this reflects a lot of effort and expertise from the council and our allies and members of the community. I'd also like to thank uh, the co-sponsor of Introduction 1099, Council Member Chaim Deutsch, who started working on this back in the year 2000 when he was a staffer for then Council Member Mike Nelson, focusing on just having two-way radios. And uh, now, again, we are, we are in a new century. We can actually just have the GPS on these buses. Uh, this was originally drafted by then Education Committee Council Laura Popa uh, and has been updated for today with the help of our current committee council, Beth Golub, and with feedback from our brothers and sisters at ATU and Teamsters who are supportive and with legal support and advice from the law offices of Regina Skyer. Today we're here to vote on two pieces of legislation aimed at preventing the annual school nightmares. At the start of every school year, New York City students are stuck on buses for hours, leaving parents worrying about where their children are. Parents could rest assured of their child's location if they could simply track it. As reported by the New York Times, the annual bus nightmares reached crisis levels on November when winter storm Avery left young children who received special education on a bus in the snow 
for more than 10 hours. They didn't get home until the next day. These bills will take lessons from Boston, where parents get bus routes weeks ahead of the school year in time to challenge bus routes and look trouble, and from New York City Chancellor's home city of Houston, where since 2015, parents have had access to the GPS app so they know where the bus is in the event of delays. Introduction 1099 of 2018 requires the Office of Pupil Transportation to provide real-time GPS location data to authorized individuals such as parents and the Department of Education. This service will eliminate the problem of bus drivers and escorts fielding frantic and angry calls from parents and schools, allowing them to focus on doing their jobs safely. To be clear, the intention of this bill is not to provide bus companies the ability to surveil their workers and generate discipline, but rather to provide safety and security for students, allow parents the peace of mind to know where the children are in cases of emergency, and to facilitate more efficient school bus transportation. Of course, in cases of complaints or incidents, the data will be available for review, but it shouldn't be used indiscriminately just to discipline workers. Introduction 114, B requires OPT to share bus routes with families 15 days prior to the first day of school. This legislation also forces OPT to perform dry runs for the routes, routes chosen, report annually on how yellow bus routes are determined, and report the number of buses and staff needed to meet those goals and recommendations. Parents in New York City have been fighting for accommodations and services for their children, some of which have special needs and depend on that our city will be responsible in driving their kids to school. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Member. Thank you, Councilmember uh, Kalos. I just also I just want to note that we've been joined by Councilmember Borelli and Councilmember Cornegy. Um, and before we, we vote, I just want to say that this is really an example of effective and responsive government. Uh, as my colleagues noted, and as we all witnessed, that there were unacceptable uh, conditions, situations that our children were uh, subjected to and families subjected to at the start of the school year with regards to significant uh, bus delays, non-pickups, and even if, uh, up to the recent uh, snowstorm. Um, but many of us met with impacted families. We met with uh, bus companies. We met with some vendors. We met with labor. We met with a variety of stakeholders. We listened. We had a hearing. Speaker actually came to our hearing, listened as well, spoke, spoke very powerfully. We worked together on, I think, a, a really a powerful, comprehensive set of legislation. And we're now passing laws to make sure and to really follow up to ensure that doesn't happen again to the extent that possible. And so I think I want to thank all of my colleagues for, for their work because many of you fielded those calls from parents and frustrated families in your districts. And together, collectively, we responded. This is government the way it should be. So I want to thank all of my colleagues for their work. I've also just been joined by Council Member Lander. Thank you, Council Member, for being here as well. Uh, and with that, I will ask the committee clerk to call the roll and begin the vote. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on education. All items are coupled. Chair Traeger. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission to express my vote? Permission granted. As a chairman of the Transportation Committee, I congratulate Chairman uh, this committee and all the colleagues here for making transportation safer to our students. No doubt that the day when we were hit by the snow, it was not only because of the George Washington Bridge had some crashes there that the city basically stopped. A uh, Francis Roja, a student with disability, a autism student, got home at 1.30 in the morning just because the yellow bus was not moving in the street. So for me, as a former teacher for 13 years, as a co-founder to a school, and as a council member, chairman of the Committee of Transportation, it is so, no, it's so nice to know that we, as a as the council with the leadership with Speaker Johnson, the chairman, and all of us from this Committee of Transportation are taking this matter very seriously, making a yellow bus of transportation safer and more efficient, and not only when we are hit by the snow, by the 365 days a year. That's our responsibility, and this package of bills show how committed uh, this council is to make the life of our students safer. With that, I vote aye. Baron. Uh, I vote aye. Congratulations to all of my colleagues, and I ask to be added to all of this very significant legislation. Thank you. Cohen. Permission to explain my vote? Sure. 
Uh, I do just want to echo, uh, I, I, I don't want to hurt my arm patting us on the back, but I'm very impressed about the, the turnaround of this, that we have a, a thoughtful, comprehensive package, I think, in an area that really needed updating and reform, uh, and that we turned this around so quickly. I think that uh, it really is a testament to the leadership of our, our chair uh, and our speaker and the bill sponsors. Uh, so uh, with that, I'm going to vote aye on all. Carnegie. Permission to explain? Sure. So as a father of six, I want to say thank you. Um, you know, prior to joining uh, this council, I had no idea what it took to get things passed and um, how committed you had to be. So as the chair of education and all the bill sponsors, I want to, I want to thank you. Um, parents, uh, including myself and my wife, for many years, uh, there was a period where all six children were in school at the same time. In the afternoons, were very complex in making sure everyone was home safe and where they were supposed to be as working parents. Uh, the idea that this council would make the safety of our children a priority in this way and in this quick turnaround uh, makes me very proud to be a member of this council. So thank you. Deutsch. <laughs> Permission to explain my vote? Sure. So as a, first, I'm, I'm extremely proud of this uh, package of bills and uh, as a, uh, parent of five children. I know how it feels when you lose sight of a child even for a few seconds. So I just want to uh, touch upon um, intro 1099A, which I'm a, uh, a prime sponsor on that bill uh, that requires uh, two-way communication and a GPS system uh, on all school, school uh, buses. Um, since 2000, mm -hmm. this uh, bill was introduced, uh, this concept was, was introduced five times. Uh, it was first introduced in 2000, then again in 2002, uh, and at that time it was two-way communication, and then in 2005 the GPS system was added to the bill, and then it was re again reintroduced in 2006, and again in 2010. And I'm going to be pretty blunt, um, when I worked for my predecessor, Council Member Mike Nelson, he did not support the two previous um, uh, speakers, uh, the speakers during his time, and uh, during their role in becoming speaker, so they wouldn't allow this bill to go f uh, to the floor for a vote. Uh, they put um, politics before our children, and we are fortunate to have a speaker that puts our children first and doesn't play those old school politics. So um, I want to thank um, Councilman Ben Kalos for his leadership and also Councilman Trager, uh, Chair of the Education Committee, that finally the, this bill is uh, uh, be gonna become a fruition and we uh, now will hold um, our city accountable and ensuring that we know where our school children are going and coming uh, from school. I also wanna touch upon 1148B, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, <coughs> That would, um, that would require a dry run for all yellow buses. And like I said before, that if our sanitation um, department before the snow season has a dry run for snow removal, why shouldn't our school children have that dry run when they are uh, transporting our school children? And these are common sense bills which should have been done a long time ago and I wanna thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his common sense approach and working with all my colleagues to ensure that uh, these common sense, common sense bills such as these and the package of bills uh, come for a vote. So thank you, I vote aye and all. Drum. Pers permission to explain my vote? Sure. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Chair. Congratulations on this package. It is uh, very comprehensive, and um, congratulations are due to you and to all of my colleagues as well. In terms of my legislation on the uh, ridership guide, uh, it's important for parents to know and to understand what they can expect and what is expected of those who provide transportation to our children to and from school. So I'm very pleased that this package is moving forward, and again, I want to say congratulations and with that, I vote aye. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Sorry, but I just wanted to, I, I missed some things. So just as a new parent, it starts to change how you look at life and you see a lot of the children as 
your child being in that exact same situation. And when we got a call at 9.30 p.m. Uh, from Jennifer Reynoso that her child still hadn't gotten home, we were up until midnight making sure they got connected. City Hall was involved, the mayor's office was involved, the NYPD was involved. My wife didn't go to sleep. Uh, and and I've, I've done a lot in this job. Uh, when we signed our campaign finance law, uh, my wife was not, that didn't have anything to say. This morning, my wife actually kissed me and said, thank you for getting this done. Uh, we can now send our child to public school knowing she'll actually get there. We'll have the buses, and, and my daughter's still an infant, but uh, it, parents all over the city have been reaching out to say thank you, and uh, that usually does not happen, so that is just how impactful this legislation is. I also want to thank uh, uh, Wilfredo Lopez. He's my new legislative director, and now after getting uh, his third bill passed in his first month or so, he will no longer be called my new legislative director. Uh, we're also losing our outgoing legal fellow, Emily Carranza, and we wish her well, and we welcome our new legal fellow, Yuri Carroll. Uh, so thank you. I proudly vote aye on all. Lander. Thank you, and also want to offer my congratulations to you, Mr. Chair, and to all the sponsors of this very important package, and I'll be voting aye on all. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Sure. Um, as the chair of the youth committee, um, it's, we have issues all the time about the safety of our young people in the schools, in the streets, after school, and it is just um, common sense that we would want to protect our young people um, as they're being transported to and from school. And so I want to thank the, the sponsors, the prime sponsors, this committee for a comprehensive yet common sense, long overdue legislation that ensures the safety of our young people um, to and from school. And I, I would like to be added to this very significant package of bills, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gordon Chick. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Chairman? Sure. I, uh, my wife wasn't up when I left the house this morning because I come from so far away that uh, she was still sleeping. She's not back at school yet, uh, Professor Grudenchik. But uh, I do want to thank uh, the chairman, the speaker, and, and all the sponsors of all the legislation. Uh, I represent a community that has very, very little public transportation, no subways, no Long Island railroads. We do have some buses, but uh, that is far and uh, uh, away um, a problem for us. And, I do want to address the needs of the special education children of the city of New York, which there are tens of thousands of. Um, I have five standalone District 75 schools in uh, my council district, and I know um, what it means to the parents of those children that they will be able to track the progress of their children coming home in all kinds of weather. So I, I thank you all for this wonderful package, and I look forward uh, to voting twice for today, uh, once right now, where I vote aye on all, and later at the stated meeting. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. I just want to say um, congratulations. Thank you for your leadership. And as a mother of a um, child in the seventh grade, and I drop my son off at school every single morning, and I pick him up in the afternoon, um, I vote aye on all. Brennan. Uh, congratulations, Chair. Uh, with a request to add myself to all the bills here today that I'm not on already, I vote aye on all. Levin. Um, with request to uh, add my name to all of the legislation uh, bills here today, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Borelli. A brief explanation, please, sir. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to say that you all are familiar with a lot of uh, things that I say, and a lot of times I disagree with, with things that the council does, and it's rare that I do get to say this, uh, and I hope you all take it to heart that this package of bills is an absolute home run for the parents uh, and children of this city 100%. This committee uh, in the past and the council as a whole has focused on the education side of 
the Education Committee, which, which in fairness probably does uh, consist of more substantive things, but we've for too long ignored uh, th this po portion of New York City public schooling uh, where parents have so many concerns and put such great faith uh, and uh, hope in the system to deliver their child to and from home. So I vote aye on all <coughs> and congratulate the chair and the speaker. My vote of 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. Uh, thank you so much to all my colleagues for their work. And honestly, this was a collective effort. And just remind my colleagues as well, the school bus industry is a $1.2 billion industry that historically has not seen the type of oversight and accountability that we need to, to place on it. And I think that this package of legislation will shine a very bright light on where we need to continue advocacy. This is not the end, this is still, there's still more work to do. But now families and parents and our districts will have a lot more information. They will have information in real time and will be able to hold companies that have our children on their buses more accountable because those delays, those non-shows, unacceptable. 10 hours on a school bus, that food water, unacceptable. We must hold people accountable. So again, this is an example of government being effective and responsive in a timely fashion. And I, again, thank all my colleagues and the speaker for the leadership and, and their support. Thank you. And this hearing is now adjourned.